Triple bunk, U-shaped dinette, beautiful interior, solid surface countertops, and an outside kitchen. Folks, this is the 2022 Forest River Evo T3250. So let's jump right into it, starting off with the kitchen. I'm a huge fan of the kitchen. I really, really like the countertop they used in here. Folks, it is a true solid surface countertop. Uh, I like that it's a little bit thicker as well. Sometimes with the solid surface, they go a little thin, uh, and I like having the, the thicker countertop. It just, I don't know, it looks more robust, looks more residential to me. I think they did a great job there. Uh, you have the high rise, you know, kind of, again, residential, almost industrial style faucet with like the spring coming over it, oil rub bronze. Um, you know, it gives you a little more flexibility when washing and rinsing dishes, makes life a little easier. And of course, because you have solid surface, they also give you the sink top covers. Now, if we remove that, you will see underneath is an uh, undermount. Uh, I believe this one, yeah, it's going to be your single bowl. And that is um, a composite style sink. But what I really enjoy about the countertop too is not just the fact that it's solid surface, but how much prep space you get. Um, they did a really good job. And you know, while it is a little tight in the entryway right here, I think it's worth what they did to be able to give you as much countertop space as they did because they could have cut this back, but I love having this prep space here. You have all this space over here for your coffee maker. You have more prep space over here, plus you have the sink top covers and of course, you have the undermounted three burner cooktop with the glass cover. So, in this one, you get a lot of kitchen countertop space, which is a big win for me. Of course, to use this, it just folds up and back just like so. Pretty simple, right? Standard stuff there. Uh, nice big window in the back, along with almost like the a gray, like brick looking backsplash. Um, I think that's kind of a, a little bit different too, right? You can get a better look on the entertainment wall. When we look at the entertainment center, you'll see it there. Uh, but it is just a nice accent wall piece there too. When we drop down underneath, you will see the oven, of course, as well as two drawers. And you have some additional storage underneath the sink, so you have enough space there for pots, pans, whatever else you need to toss in. Plus additional storage here up top, microwave, and then the streamlined hood as well. Moving over into the fridge freezer, you have the Dometic fridge freezer combo. This is a gas absorption fridge, meaning that it does run uh, on not only electric, but also on propane. So, um, you know, it's kind of the, what the standard RV fridge has been for a long time. And a lot of people like it because it does give you that flexibility and it also has automatic switch over in there. So yeah, it's kind of a, a set it and forget it. Next to that, you get a large pantry. This is something that more and more manufacturers are trying to put in. Um, and I really like when they do, especially when you know, it's a dedicated pantry space. A lot of times in bunk models, what you'll end up having is you have this shared space where it can be a pantry or it can be a place for the kids' clothes, but it can't be both at the same time, right? You have to choose. Uh, in this one, we'll see in a little bit that there is another space for the kids' clothes. So this is dedicated pantry space. And uh, so for me, that is a big win. Making your way back a little bit further, right here is your thermostat. This does control your ducted AC. If we take a look at the AC uh, right up top here, see this one does have a quick dump. Again, as most of them do when they are ducted, um, that's really nice when you are loading or unloading the camper, right? Instead of having it duct, uh, you know, go all the way through, this is the main area you're gonna be in moving around loading up. So you just open these up and the majority of that cold air just falls right on top of you, helping to keep things nice and cool in this main room. Uh, this also does control the ducted furnace and you will see that they have the heat ducts in the floor. Um, you know, whether it's in the floor or furniture, both have advantages and disadvantages. The big advantage of having it in the floor is that they get to kind of choose where they put the heat runs, right? They're not beholden to where the furniture is, uh, to where they put the heat ducts, so they get to kind of space them out however they desire. That way it can a lot of times be a little more efficient and give you better heating. If we take a look right back here again, it is a little tight walking through here. You know, you can see, I mean, I, I have fairly broad shoulders, but you know, it, it's a little tight making it through. It's kind of a sideways squeeze, but I do appreciate that you get wardrobe space. You take a peek in there, you can see a hanging rod. So this is dedicated wardrobe space for the bunk room. I love that this is here. You also see underneath you have four drawers for you know some of the unmentionables and socks, whatever else you need. And then right underneath that is your breaker panel as well as your fuse box. And then right across the way is the bathroom. We'll take a quick peek in here, look at the space. 
Starting off with the toilet. Foot flush lever toilet, as you'd expect. Uh, this one is a porcelain bowl. Again, when you're talking about some uh, higher end amenities, I really like having a porcelain bowl personally. It does weigh a little bit more, but it will also be a lot easier to clean and stay looking nice, nicer for a longer period of time. As for space, plenty of leg room, good shoulder space here. You have a door, and I really enjoy this as well. Uh, I know some people, you know, still are, are a little weirded out about it, but you know, a couple things. One, you'll see this one doesn't have a window. Some manufacturers put a window in here to let more light into the bathroom. Uh, but it, that, again, some people have privacy concerns. You'll see here you don't have to worry about that. And, of course, you can always lock the door if you're using the bathroom. But the reason I like it is because you can come right in, use the bathroom, head right back out. You're not bringing dirt throughout the entire RV. Right next to that is your uh, sink top. You have a pretty good size sink here, which I like, so it makes it nice and easy to you know wash hands, brush your teeth. The reason I say that is you'll be surprised. Uh, a lot of times, right, your medicine cabinet will stick way out. Your sink sits far back. It's a small sink. You go to you know brush your teeth and, and spit your toothpaste in the sink, and it doesn't happen. Uh, you, you definitely can here. So. Um, you know, kudos to them for, for making sure that the dimensions are correct. You also see an electrical outlet, storage underneath, medicine cabinet up top. Uh, this one is a little tricky, the reason being, you know, it, it's wood framed, right? But the inside is, is still plastic. Uh, so they kind of, it's kind of like a hybrid between the two. Also, your light switch is located right here. Uh, it's kind of a little bit tricky if, if you're first walking in this, if you're wondering, how do I turn the light on in the bathroom? It's kind of hidden a little bit right behind that uh, mirrored medicine cabinet tucked right back there. Over to the side is the tub shower. Now, I'm six foot tall. As you can see, I have plenty of room with this skylight. Can probably be six two and still be able to stand in here and not have to duck down, which is really nice. Also, it is a tub, so if you have uh, littles that you want to give a bath to, this gives you the capability to do it, and it helps the shower curtain stay you know, in that tub because it has the higher wall, um, which you, know, you normally don't have with the shower. Now, when I turn sideways, you know, again, this is a pretty standard RV tub. So yes, I will be contending with uh, the curtain a little bit, but what you'll notice is they did bring this out some, right? Instead of going straight across, it does come out right here. So it does give me a little more space than a lot of times you would get. So uh, again, I am glad that they, they did that. Uh, hand wand, of course, you know, pretty standard. It does make it a little bit easier to uh, wash up too. Then when we make our way back out, let's go take a look at the bunk room. So coming back here, you'll see you have the uh, teddy bear bunk. Uh, right up top here, this will be your largest bunk, of course. Window up top there as well. Excuse me. You do have a USB port right here. So if they need to plug in some electronics, that gives you the capability to do it. Uh, personally, it's a very small thing, right? I, I wish they would have put at least one light up here um, in case, you know, the child wants to read or something, that there's a little more light. Just It's slightly dark up in this top bunk. Very, very small things. Just one of those things that, uh, you know, I would have liked to have seen. Then the very back, again, you have a large window there. Roller shades throughout, by the way. Big win. They're a lot easier to use than tension blinds, so I am glad they have those. If we take a look underneath that bunk, you'll see the ladder comes out, which makes it easier to climb. I've you know some <laughs> manufacturers sometimes, I don't know why they do it, but you will have uh, your ladder, right, and it'll be just like this, and then this wall will be like right here, and then you can't put your foot in there. There's just not enough space, right? All you can do is get like your tippy toes on there and it's super hard to climb up. So when the ladder can come out, that does make it easier. Storage on the side as well as down below. You also have TV hookups right up here as you would expect. So that way you can watch TV. And that of course is directly across from the slide out which has your fold up bunk up top and then your um, what well, normally be like cube style sofas down below. This one is slightly different than a lot of other manufacturers that have this same design because normally they have two cubes, right? It's split right in between here. Whereas in the Evo, this is all one piece. This does fold out into one larger bed, which is kind of nice if you, know, you have two adults that want to snuggle up a little bit. Uh, this gives you the capability to do that. But otherwise you have a really comfortable couch there. And as I mentioned, that is directly across from the TV exactly where you want it. Uh, I also do like the slide fascia. I think they did a good job on that too. You know, kind of having incorporating a couple different colors there, bringing the light in with the dark. And we see that continue on through as we uh, make our way into the, or back into the main living area and we look at the super slide. You'll see the U-shaped dinette there. That, of course, also drops down into a large bed that is capable of sleeping two adults. 
Um, and you can definitely, you know, sit three to four people here, no problem. So the whole family can sit together and uh, have a meal here, hopefully, or play a game. As far as storage, I think they did a really good job on storage on both pieces. My, my only, um, I don't know, I guess, <coughs> excuse me. The only thing that I would change a little bit is I wish this drawer was a little bit deeper. I love the fact they have a drawer here just because that does make it easier to access anything underneath. Um, but, you know, I just wish it would have been a little bit deeper. It's really my only critique. But I love they have a drawer here and especially underneath the jackknife sofa. Look at this. How great is that? You know, it, it does cut off a little bit of storage so you can't fit items that are quite as large. But the convenience of have being able to pull out a drawer, that one hand operation. I don't have to get down on my hands and knees. You know, sometimes it'll just be like a fold down. This is uh, by far the easiest to get into. And if you have to, of course, you can still jackknife the sofa up and access it that way. And that does also drop down into a bed. You have windows all the way around, which I love. Brings in a ton of natural light as well as airflow. So that's always appreciated. And as you're sitting here in that super slide, you wanna watch TV you'll see you have a fairly large wall space here for a TV. That's a concern for some people. They want, uh, you know, a good size TV. Not all floor plans or all manufacturers allow for that. This one you have pretty decent space. Then if you take a look underneath, you will see the multimedia center. That of course does have your HDMI input on the front as well for any auxiliary equipment. Fireplace underneath, which not only looks nice, but is also an electric space heater. So it'll help to take the chill off in this space. And if you, uh, you know, are just standard at a campsite, if you're not like a seasonal or anything, chances are you're not paying for electricity. So for you as an RVer, that's essentially free heat, which is great. And then underneath, you will also see accent lighting. Uh, they, they have it there as well as on top of the slide fascia. So a couple different spots to accent that lighting. You'll also notice that you know you have a wall and a door leading into the bedroom. I know some people like a little more privacy, you know, rather than just having like a curtain. And so this does uh, certainly offer more privacy in my opinion. And then we make our way into the bedroom. You know, I know this is something really minor, but I really like this little throw right here. It's super soft. Um, you know, I think it's uh, a little more trendy than what we see a lot of times. Even the comforter is uh, a little bit, you know, nicer than, than what we've, I've seen in, in some other manufacturers. I think they did a great job there. You, of course, have the pillow to match. You have kind of like the shiplap wall board up top there. Um, instead of just having a shelf, this is enclosed storage. So, you know, again, if you have things that you don't want people to see, some of your unmentionables, uh, that's a better spot for it than what is oftentimes offered in a travel trailer bedroom. You also have the shelf space here and of course uh, the wardrobe hanging space. <coughs> and then right over here, if you can take a look, you see uh, that guy right there. So it's like a little uh, clothes hamper space. You know, not the biggest thing ever, but I, I kind of like the idea behind it. Um, you know, not, not again, not that you can fit a ton, but it might be able to fit an item or two in there before you, before you have to wash it. You of course also have electrical outlets and USB ports on both sides. And if you want TV, you will see right there uh, is where your TV will be mounted. Your connections are there. And more importantly, if you want a second AC, even though there's not a vent in here, this one is prepped for that second AC. So you can have that installed to make sure that even on the hottest days, you still stay nice and cool. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2022 Forest River Evo T3250. Starting off right up front as a standard, you will see this one has a power tongue jack. This makes it a lot easier. It's not only connects and disconnect from your tow vehicle, but also makes it easier to level the RV front to back. So instead of having to crank it up and down, well, all I have to do is flip a rocker switch. Right behind that are two 30 pound propane tanks with a cover. So uh, most of your travel trailers will come with 20 pounds. I like that they give you the larger 30 pound tanks. It lets you stay out camping longer. You'll also see that your rails are already set up for two batteries. They fully expect you to have two batteries. If you wanna be able to take this one and do a little bit of boondocking, having those two batteries is a huge advantage. And along with that, you'll see two other things. One, the battery disconnect. So you can turn that and immediately kill that uh, slow drain off those batteries. So if you're storing it for an extended period of time, or even if you know it's just a couple weeks, 
If it's not in use, you definitely want to turn that battery disconnect off so that way your batteries stay nice and full. You will also see right over to the side is your solar prep. So with those two batteries, again, if you want to just have that slow trickle charge on there, help keep them topped off, having that solar prep is a great way to do it. Simply buy the portable panels, plug it in right there, and you will be good to go. Coming up the front, you'll see you have the protective plating right there underneath here to protect from some of the rocks and debris that get thrown up by your tow vehicle. And above that is the smooth aluminum front. And when you have an aluminum exterior, I personally really like when manufacturers put the smooth front on there, not only because I think it looks nicer, but also just because it's easier to clean. And seeing as how that's where the majority of your bug splatters are gonna be, you definitely want it as easy to clean as possible. Coming around to the sides, take a look at the pass-through and you will see you have a lot, and I mean a lot, of storage in here. Uh, you can see that it kind of shares the access with underneath the bed. You can see the struts on there. So you have a couple different uh, entry points to this storage space, both on this side, the off-camp side, and underneath the bed. You have lights in there as well as uh, storage locations for some of your hand tools. In the rare event that things fail, you need to use the hand cranks. That is where they are located. Uh, making our way down a little bit further, you will see this unit also has power stabilizer jacks. Now, bear in mind, you don't want to use those to level the RV. You still want to use blocks, but these are great because they do help stabilize the RV very easily. Rather than, again, having to manually crank them up and down, you have one rocker switch up here that controls the front two, another one in the back to operate the back two. Those drop down and your RV will be a lot more steady. Also, I want to point out why we're down here. It's kind of tough to see, but the underbelly on this one is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, that underbelly is what they call the accessibility. And the reason I like it is it's a little bit um, more sturdy than your standard underbelly. Normally it's like a, uh, like kind of like a glorified corrugated cardboard, right? That doesn't absorb uh, water. So, it, and it works for what it is, but with this, the accessibility, again, this is a little bit stronger in case there's anything that flips up there, you know, rocks, things like that. It's not going to puncture it as easy. And more importantly, because it comes in sections, it's a lot easier to access the underbelly in case you need to get in there. Whether it's, uh, you know, you need to check plumbing or whatever else it may be, Getting into that underbelly, you don't have to cut a hole and patch it. You don't have to tear the whole underbelly off. You just remove one section, do what you need to do, and reattach that section. So for a maintenance standpoint, awesome, awesome underbelly on the Evo. A couple other things I want to hit on the outside. One, of course, is the power awning with the LED light strip. And it doesn't matter what position the awning is in, you can still use that LED light, as well as outside speakers. And those are tied to the multimedia center that is inside. This particular one has two entrances and exits. Both of them have your standard RV steps. Uh, you know, the, while these aren't quite as sturdy as like some of the more solid steps that are out there, the more I'd step above system. The nice thing about these steps is when you fold them up, it doesn't matter if they're wet, all that water and mud, whatever else isn't going inside the camper. You can just fold them up and be done. Uh, so, you know, depending on, on what you want, if you want to replace the steps with the other ones, by all means, we do offer them aftermarket as well, so you can certainly do that. One of the things I really do like is having the light right outside here, so that way it does help light up those steps in case you're getting in there at night. You will also see right underneath that they have a dog tether. So if you need a convenient spot to you know, tie up your furry loved one, you can do that there. And if you extend the awning, you will have obviously shade for them here as well, which is what that uh, sticker is referring to. If you want a TV outside, there is a backer. So this shows you where to mount it. And then the connections for that uh, are right underneath it. Make way back a little bit further, a couple cool things here. One of them is a winterization connection. This one does come with a water heater bypass inside, so it does make winterizing this RV a little bit easier. I certainly appreciate that because I live in colder climates and in the winter, we have to winterize our RVs. Y'all see the fresh water inlet in case you wanna fill the fresh water tank if you're going somewhere you don't have city water. Outside shower with both hot and cold water access. Our secondary entrance here, again, with that exterior light and a black tank flush. This is wonderful because instead of having to stick a hose down the toilet to wash out your black tank with this, you just hook it up right here. That black tank has sprayers built in and it will wash it out for you. You also notice the outside kitchen. It is a larger outside kitchen. This is great when you have a bunk model uh, and you have bunks on the campsite. It allows for something like this. And what I personally really enjoy is the larger refrigerator. Um, again, this is a big win for me just because this is one of the things I love most about having an outside kitchen 
and you know putting a bunch of beverages in there absolutely perfect keep things nice and cool pretty good storage up here as well you also have a drawer in case you need a little place for you know plasterware or whatever else electrical outlet in case you want to plug in you know toaster electric griddle something like that if you want to do a little bit different cooking out here than the grill which i'll show you in just a second and of course you have the sink there so i mentioned the grill you make your way around you'll see this unit does come with the grill right here it's on a swing arm so that just spins around you have the propane quick connect right down underneath now bear in mind if you know you don't want to use this grill if you have like a blackstone or something you'd prefer to use you can still plug it into that quick connect and it'll work uh, just as well you can also see the rear mounted ladder 250 pound weight capacity to climb up on the fully walkable roof there while we're taking a look up top you will also see backup camera prep so if you want a backup camera having that prep will make it easier to install therefore saving you money on labor and you have the spare tire mounted on the rear bumper here and of course the rear bumper is a square tubular bumper with the end caps giving you a spot to store your sewer hose last couple things is on the off camp side uh, over there you do have your city water inlet your satellite and cable inlets um, as well as your 30 amp detachable power inlet. Now, if we remember seeing inside, this one did have the fireplace. So because it's a 30 amp, forgot to show this, but there is a switch uh, in the kitchen to switch between the fireplace and the AC, as you can't have them both on at the same time with a 30 amp power source. That being said, folks, this right here is a beautiful family camper. If you are interested in the 2022 Forest River Evo T3250 and you would like price and availability, all you have to do is click on the link in the description. Thanks again for watching, folks. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.